how things are cooling off. And, and that's the Facebook post I really wanted to pull up because somebody in our collective genius group posted today that, uh, you know, what, what's going on in your market, mm -hmm. basically, are things really cooling off? And it really was depending on where they were. Yep. Um, Arizona said they started cooling off in May. Somebody in Chicago said they started cooling off the beginning of June. Um, then we've got people in Texas and uh, some people in the Southeast were, you know, putting their two cents in there saying we're still, still as hot as we can be. And then there were other people too, that were saying it really depends upon the price point. They started talking about anything over 300 is it's appearing to sit just a little bit longer. And I would hundred percent agree with that. I mean, we have reached that buyer fatigue. Well, buyer fatigue and, and just buyer uh, ability. I mean, mm -hmm. this was it 6% inflation or is it maybe a little higher? That has occurred uh, nationally, uh, locally. It's in some places. It's up to twenty percent. Um, has priced a lot of guys or and guys and gals out of homes. Yeah. Who they they want to buy a home and then to couple with that, the rates have ticked up a quarter of a point. So if they could have afforded that house and it was really thin when the rates went up. I mean, it might just throw their DTI off yeah. and they, they can't get it. So yeah. you're seeing people, yeah, like you said, like a three, 350 margin mm -hmm. where they want to buy under that. There's nothing, there's, there's little to no inventory in yeah. that price range Yeah, and new construction. The, the permitting is down 5% uh, June over, over May. And, and, you know, we have supply issues. They're not finishing the homes. Right. And then it's costing more to finish them. So <laughs> You know, there, there's so many issues. What will it that do? Are How will it affect? Yeah, I mean, you know? we, we don't know who, who can still afford these homes. I mean, the argument is most people who can afford, uh, like, the inventory that's out there has already purchased. So, the one of the reports that I read, and we're was, still short on inventory. And we're still short on, we're, in every market. <laughs> I mean, we've been saying this from day one. Yeah, affordable housing, and that's what like that's what we want to focus mm -hmm, on, but mm -hmm. like. With the supply chain issues, I know lumber has come down significantly. Still, I think seventy percent higher than it was yeah, last still, year. Still crazy. But. Um, so those those things are creating issues for affordable housing. Yeah. Um, so, and and that's one of the you know, I would argue one of the biggest, like we we're, we're doing new construction, but man, it's tough for those guys yeah. because of the costs. Yeah. I know we're you know what would have cost someone, probably. 200,000 to build two years ago is costing them three, 320. Yeah. And I, I don't know how they're doing it. I mean, up until recently, they've been able to push it along because the prices of the retail side have been increasing. Mm -hmm. But gosh, what if you're a, a custom builder, you give somebody a price to, you, to build their house and you are, you are up the creek. Yeah being able to pay that. My other thought too, when I'm um, thinking about how quickly the market is changing, how expensive even starter homes are and homes that you want to buy to rehab are, yeah. is this really a good time for a new investor to get into the business? You got to have some pretty big, um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was going to say ambitions, but, <laughs> yeah. but yeah, you got to be, you got to be really focused and in my opinion, cash flush to be able to start as a new investor. I mean, you really need to have um, the ability to cover any overages, which will happen. 